uh, we have the presiding officer would have asked the whips to indicate the position of their respective parties. And the whip would then say, so many members of my party are voting yes, and these members are voting no. So we've made provision for that in the event that technology is not able to assist us to record voting like now, for instance, we do not have a mechanism to vote electronically. So either by yeah. voice, like in a sit setting like this, but in a bigger setting, voice might not assist, but the uh, whips indicating how, how their members are voting is, is a, would be the process to, to take in that regard. Um, and the procedure to be followed is predetermined by the speaker and directive are announced in the meeting by the presiding officer or the chairperson. Only members who are present when a vote is called shall be permitted to vote, who are, mem who are present at that point when the, when the decision is being taken. So if a member logged in and left the platform, they will not be regarded as present, the same as it, as it applies in the House. The results of a vote are announced, and where possible, the names of members and how they voted are recorded in the minutes uh, of proceedings. Of course, it's going to be a lot of reliance on honorable whips to assist in this regard, especially on the names of the members. But as we can see, the system does indicate who is present and who is not present. And we really would urge members to, when they create their profiles, to use their, their full names, your first name and your surname for, for, for easy identification. Because if you only use your first name, we will struggle, um, firstly, to let you into the meeting, because we must first let you into the meeting, and secondly, we may struggle to, 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 to know who the member is if we do not have a say name, so that we can read this against the membership list of members. And members must ensure that their votes are recorded correctly. And uh, part H deals with uh, public involvement, that access to proceedings must be facilitated in a manner consistent with participatory and representative democracy. And whenever possible, a virtual meeting must be live streamed, which is what we have been attempting to do, to live stream the sittings of the of the, of the the committees. And honorable members, the next uh, part basically deals with, with guidelines. And this largely applies to the administration, and I don't wish to, to go through it. Madam Speaker and honorable members, that is the essence of the rules on virtual uh, meetings applicable to both plenaries of the House and to committee meetings. As indicated when I started, these were canvassed in the Chief Whips Forum and there was broad agreement on the rules after Speaker had made a determination. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. De Castro. Honorable members, your inputs? Speaker, it's Natasha. Yes, ma'am, as well. Can I also be recognized? Can I be recognized as well, Speaker? Yes, ma'am, Majordina, you are next. Honor Honorable Speaker, firstly, I'd like to take this yes, opportunity to thank the uh, uh, Mr. Kaiso and the NA table staff. I think that the broad uh, consultation was incredibly helpful, and I think that we can all agree that, given the fact that uh, we've we've moved uh, with haste on on these particular issues, is very good and very healthy, and given the fact that we stick very much to the the same rules as we have in house uh, to the virtual platforms, is also going to be very healthy. I also think that this will be a very good opportunity for the WHIPs to really uh, stand up and be counted, so to speak. It is our jobs to to be the representation of our parties, uh, be it on the virtual platform or be it in the House. And uh, the WHIPs are going to have to play a very important role. But I'm 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 convinced that uh, the WHIPs can can do this with ease, and it will be up to the parties to make sure that we maintain a supreme organisation because that's going to be the uh, the real trick to making these things work. So the whips are going to take a lot of responsibility on ourselves. But I would personally like to thank 
the NA table led by Mr. Kaiso for being available to answer any questions that we had when we were um, debating and, and negotiating these particular rules. And I am uh, very satisfied that the rules that we are going to pass today are, are in line with the rules and orders of the House and are certainly in line with the way we would like to see uh, business being done on the virtual platform. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mazoni. Ma'am Jordina? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker. I hope I'm audible enough. Yes, you are. Th thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Let me also welcome uh, the, the presentation of these uh, rules on uh, virtual meetings and fully support and endorse that uh, they become our rules as per rule six of, of, of the NA rules. However, um, when we entered this uh, uh, phase, we're not sure what type of an animal we're dealing with. But as time goes, we are going to perfect the system. The only thing is just to look at different platforms on how to effectively and efficiently conduct these um, uh, virtual meetings. But uh, as the ANC, we fully support uh, that uh, let's endorse these rules already. We are endorsing something that we have put on test and it has worked, notwithstanding some little glitches. Thank you very much, Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, the Speaker. Please. It's Gordon Alderman. Yes, thank you, ma'am. No, I would also like to uh, express my support for the rules. There's just two things that I would like to say. The first one is if a member misbehaves during a debate, members must understand that it will be under their own names. It will be quite clear to the presiding officers and everybody else because a person's name will be clearly seen. But my question is with, with regard to that same problem. <clears throat> is there a way, if a member misbehaves, is there a way in, in the House, in terms of the rules, there are certain measures that the presiding office may take, but those um, things will not be available in a virtual meeting. Is there a, 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 a possibility that a member may be cut off from the meeting if, if that kind of problem arises? Because we don't want to have a member just continuing and we can't get the member to keep quiet. Uh -huh. That's that's a very good one. And the other thing, are you going yeah, to respond? Honorable Speaker, <laughs> yeah, yes, we must eject them from the house <laughs> if they misbehave. Yes, we all sitting but in. I think we must follow. <laughs> I think, honorable members, we must follow the usual protocol like of um, trying to get the member to stand down to to withdraw, and if they don't, then we can apply the rules as we have in the ordinary city. Uh, and then in this case, we would then cut the member out. Honorable Speaker. Is that it, Paso? So in that it, thing? I had another point. Uh, I just wanted to understand when Mr. Uh, thank you for the presentation. When Mr. Kaso spoke about uh, the virtual sitting being in Cape Town, is, is he reaffirming that Cape Town is it's where Parliament sits? Be in Cape Town. Yes. And, yes. and then the other the other point that uh, you know, I thought about after we had our chief whips meeting is if, for example, all the KZN-based MPs have to go to, let's say, a Tegwini City Hall or Council Room and be beamed from there into Parliament, is that something that uh, our IT people can think about instead of us being individually connected? Thank you. Huh. Or East London, for that matter, or wherever. There's a huge centre you you, you uh, comply with all the regulations and you beam from there to Cape Town. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Klaso, can you respond? Madam Speaker, I will respond to the one about how do you deal with a member who is deemed by the presiding officer to be out of order. Uh, members will be aware that there's a rule 80 which deals with the control of the microphones that in the event of yeah. a member not showing due respect to the authority or obeying an order or ruling by the presiding officer, the presiding officer may disable or switch off the microphone being used by such a member or order that mm. that be done. So even in this instance, that would be applicable. The presiding officer can say in the waiting room if it becomes a, a pretty much problematic. In terms of the ICT question, I... Uh, 
we look into that honorable thing i don't um, don't see my the the cio here who could comment on that but it's a it's a it's an operational matter that we we will look into thank you uh, yes getting rules uh, have you made your point in that class yes ma'am i have made my point thank you madam speaker but speaker okay. he has not uh, responded to um, uh, uh, the seat being in parliament in cape town when we are on oh, virtual yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Class, so please come back to the thing on that Yes, the, the 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 head of legal services is here, but in terms of the constitution, Cape Town is a seat of parliament, and and we we used that logic uh, because you do need certainty um, on on the on the on these issues, because it's not a question of, for instance, members being in Gauteng or in it's members in all the parts of the country. So you do need certainty where you deem the seat of parliament to be. But I'm going to ask Advocate Adikari uh, to speak to this, just to uh, explain further, if possible. Advocate Adikari. Hi, good morning, Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members. Yes, indeed, the Constitution provides that the seat of Parliament is in Cape Town and deemed simply means considered to be. So in terms of virtual sitting, it's a decision that can be taken by the Rules Committee as to where the seat is considered to be. So the proposal is for it to be in Cape Town, and that's acceptable, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So okay. in other words, in other words, uh, Mayor Adikari, we, in other words, um, Mayor Adikari, we can even use holograms and and put people in their seats in the house. Correct, speaker. Can, can, can I make a follow-up, Speaker? Yes, ma'am. Honorable Speaker, can I make a follow-up? Uh, a follow-up, Speaker, I think uh, we must uh, just enrich the virtual uh, meeting rules. That must say wherever the member is must be regarded as a seat so that uh, if I do things that are, are uncalled for, I must know that I'm misrepresenting parliament because wherever I am, where I'm connected as a member, that must be regarded as a seat even if I'm in my house. At that particular time, when I'm doing parliament business, I must be regarded to be in parliament even if I'm not in parliament uh, physically. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. May I respond? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, there's a difference Please between respond. seat and... Yes, thank you. There's a difference between seat and precinct. And I think for the purpose of where you are, in, if it's in a meeting setting, then the precinct could be considered to be broader than the seat. Okay. Is that clear, ma'am, Jordan? Um, have we lost? Uh, if we please unmute your mic, ma'am. Unmute your mic, Chief. Uh, yes, but there's a lot of noise somewhere, not, not for me. Okay. S speaker, speaker, what, what, yes, what I'm, I'm suggesting is that uh, can, can, can the rules be made to be to be simpler and uh, be, to be user friendly, uh, where where I'm conducting a meeting, as a venue of that particular virtual meeting, must be regarded as a venue for Parliament. Whilst I know that I'm not physically in Cape Town, so what I'm suggesting is that they they may not respond now. They must just check where can they put that clause or 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 or, or, or I'll simplify that particular clause to link to this CC. On the on the virtual rules. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Dr. you have heard what the member says. Can you get fuller into it and come back to us? Well, well, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it's Thank Natasha. You very much. Yes, Madam Madam Speaker, forgive me if I've misunderstood something, but I was under the impression from what. Mr. Kaso uh, originally said, as well as our, our legal advisor, that uh, under these rules, 
all virtual meetings that happen are deemed to have happened in Cape Town because Cape Town is the seat of parliament. So I don't think that we need to add any further rules because that the, the rule is already there that deems all virtual meetings to be happening in parliament, which is in Cape Town, because that, that is the seat of, of the parliamentary houses. Or did I misunderstand? Ndade Kaso, please come back. Madam Speaker, I think we, we will look into the matter, but it is as uh, being said now. But what could happen instead of changing the rules? We can look at operational guidelines just to to explain, to unpack that rule C. But the rules remain intact as they are, and then so that in, in application um, there is proper understanding of how these rules are, are applicable. So we'll look into it, ma'am. But as we say, we cover the rule. Please look into it. it. Yeah. Because yes. I understand the chief whip also to say that my personal behavior in my house during the meeting must also not disturb the proceedings. So I must be deemed to be fully in Parliament when this thing happens. And that is why she is using seats, because when I'm in my seat, all the rules apply. But I understood what you meant. So look into yes. it, try and, uh, uh, and, and see if there are other weaknesses that you can see in the rule, and, and get back to us. Okay. Thank you. Honourable Speaker. Honourable uh, Speaker. Team? Yeah, uh, notwithstanding that they're going to look into it, Mr. Castle, in terms of operation, I think it's going to be imperative for us to adopt the rule as tabled today so that it can yeah. be operationalized and become a rule of the House. Thank you. Okay. Um, Honourable Members, have all of us satisfied ourselves that we support the rules as put before us today? Uh, yes, uh, can I be recognized, Speaker? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, uh, Speaker, um, on behalf of the ANC, we fully support and endorse these rules to be adopted in this rules meeting. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. There is secondment. I second, uh, I second the adoption of the Speaker. Thank you very much. So we have adopted, but we are also saying that we might want to just elaborate a little bit on, on some parts of the rules. Um, honorable members, can I then ask us to move on to item number four, consideration of reconfiguration of the cluster system of government portfolios for the questions for ministers. Um, can we have you and Dr. Castle leading us? Yes, Madam Speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, Please, the, Speaker, thank you. We have given the document, and I'm going to ask the controller to just move, move the document, move down the document. Yes. We currently have these clusters. No. We currently have these clusters, the clusters that are um, the five clusters. Uh, move to point three, please, controller. Up. You could go up. I'm sorry about this. Yes. Uh, these are the five clusters that we currently have, which were adopted by the rules uh, committee um, in terms of rule 138. One, which says that questions for oral reply by ministers must be dealt with in accordance with a clustered system of government as determined by the Rules Committee. On the 7th of May, um, the, the Programme Committee um, decided that this matter must be referred to the Rules Committee because there were proposals for the uh, clusters to be reconsidered and possibly reconfigured. Uh, so these are the current clusters that we have at the moment. We go down the document. Point four, please. If you could move, uh, controller, please move to point four of the document. We were then asked to look at the priority areas um, 
in terms of uh, the COVID-19. And we used the, the portfolios that were identified by the speaker um, and later discussed in the Chief Whips Forum as a basis for our uh, uh, option. Let's call it an option. And this is the option that we have given, um, which gives us four clusters. Cluster one, where you have health, COCTA, uh, human settlements, water and sanitation, small business development, labor employment, and cluster two, or there's basic education also in cluster one, defense, and military veterans, police, social development, trade and industry, transport, higher education, uh, science and technology as cluster two, public works and infrastructure. Cluster three, public service and admin, home affairs, justice and correctional services, public enterprises, uh, mineral resources and energy, international relations and cooperation, state security. Cluster four, sports, arts and culture, agriculture, rural development and land reform, environmental affairs, uh, forestry and fisheries, communications, tourism, Minister in the Presidency, a Minister in the Presidency for Women, um, Youth and People with uh, Disabilities. That is the proposed option that we are putting forward, uh, Madam Speaker and uh, members, in the event that this committee may wish to reconfigure these clusters. This is for consideration, it can change, it can be varied. Um, we, we get the guidance from ourselves. But for the purposes of next week, we're going with the current cluster of questions. So cluster two and cluster three are based on the current cluster of questions. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable members, the floor is open. Speaker, it's Natasha. Yes, members, one. Speaker, I wonder if Mr. Castle would be so kind as to share the screen again. With, with, the, with the clusters, just that I can refer to them. Um, Mr. Fasa, can you comply, yes. please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Th thank you very much indeed. Speaker, I, I, I happen to think that, that the clusters, the way they look now, uh, the proposals are, are, are quite good. But I, I would say a, f a few items, if I may. For example, mm -hmm. uh, it would be my opinion to put uh, clusters like public service and administration with uh, minister in the presidency, uh, minister in the presidency with women, uh, youth and people with disabilities, um, and, 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 you know, put them in, in, the, in the same cluster because it, it doesn't make sense to me that, that they, they would be separated into, into two different clusters. I think that they should be in, in the same cluster. And then I, I would think, for example, um, that trade and industry, the Department of Trade and Industry, would be together with transport, uh, finance, small business development um, in the same cluster. And then, for example, uh, basic education would be with in the same cluster as higher education uh, and science and technology. So I, I think in general, the, the way we're moving is in the right direction. But I just think that uh, it, it would be good for, for us to take these proposed clusters and maybe just rework them so that the, it just makes more sense for clusters that, that belong uh, in, in the same it, for example, the economics clusters should be should be gathered more more concisely together, um, and, and that would that would certainly be my opinion. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is there any other intervention? Honourable Speaker. Yes, can I be recognised? Honourable Speaker, I be followed by Member Jodina. Okay, thank you very much, Honourable Speaker, colleagues. Now, I agree with Honourable Mazzoni in terms of the tweaks that need to be made. But I also would like to make a point that uh, when questions are placed on the, uh, on the question paper, that there is a balance of questions from each of the portfolios. So within a cluster, we must make sure that uh, there are questions from each portfolio that are put on the order paper. Uh, for uh, oral answers by ministers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Jordina? 
Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker. Let me agree with the last part of um, uh, Honorable Singh. On the proposed cluster, uh, my submission, uh, Honorable Speaker, is that um, let's keep the current clusters as they are. Remember, when we agreed on lifting the 16 for COVID-19 related uh, issues, it was at the start of our second term in April. However, the work of parliament moves beyond uh, 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 COVID-19 16 committees because later on, some of the committees are going, are, 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 or, or departments are affected by COVID-19. And therefore, in the meantime, I want to, to make a recommendation that let's keep these clusters as they are, but make an arrangement if there are pressing issues that we want from cluster one when it's supposed to be cluster five. We, we do the, the similar arrangement that we're going to do on the, on the 27th rather than restarting. Notwithstanding that uh, government is, or is still uh, supposed to, to reconfigure the departments. So I don't think it is a correct t timing now to reconfigure the clusters in parliament. Thank you. Um, is there any other intervention? Yes, sir. Richard Yanji. Please, please go ahead and Dr. Yanji. Thank you very much, Speaker. I, I, I want to support uh, for the purposes of us testing the effectiveness of this, that we stay with the current proposed four clusters because the economy cluster, if you remember, we had five clusters. The economy cluster was always divided into two clusters. So if we were to go back to that, it would not be helpful. I, I understand the issues raised by member Mazzoni about issues of coherence and so on because I think that can still be done within the arrangement of the, the current four proposed clusters. So I would really want us to stick to that. And therefore, as we said with everything else, as we go along, we're going to see where we need to make changes. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Um, is there Speaker. any other Speaker. input on this matter? Speaker, Speaker you can recognize me, please. Yes, but Speaker. who am I recognizing? Uh, remember, I'm joining you on the phone, so I can't see your faces. Who? Julius. Can I assist, Honorable Speaker? Can I assist? It, the first uh, Honorable yes. Member was the Kornoff, uh, followed by okay. uh, Honorable Julius. Okay. Can we can we go in that uh, order, please? Honorable Kornoff, Honorable Julius. Thank you, Speaker. Um, uh, just go back to uh, what Mr. Kasu said. When we first proposed the, the COVID-19 portfolio committees, uh, I think on the list of Mr. Kasu, Kasu, it was 16. Those were originally meant for portfolio committee meetings. Then it developed further than that because then we started to look at budget votes. And, and more committees started to meet um, than the originally identified 16. Purely because we, we, we wanted to consider the budget 2020. And that is now coming to an end. So the 16 committees identified for COVID specifically, events has overtaken us. And, and uh, if you look at the the uh, committee meeting paper, committee meetings paper, the order paper, the Z list, you will see there are much more meeting, uh, committees meeting than the identified 16. So that's the first point. Secondly, at the current moment, cabinet still keep, uh, uh, keeps to their uh, clusters. Um, this morning, certain cabinet committees are meeting. And I think it will be, I want to make the proposal and support uh, the, the chief whip of the majority party that we keep to the cl current clusters. Because the two sets of clusters, originally, why it worked so well is because they were in balance with one another from the executive side and from the legislative side. Once we, we, we change the cluster now, it, it may go into 
um, unintended consequences. So I strongly support the view that we keep to the current clusters, we test the system, we run with it, and if it works, we, we uh, reconsider it. Thank you. Thank you. Julius. Thank you. Good morning, uh, speaker and members. Um, I think that uh, the reason why we have this point on the agenda is precisely because we want the urgency of issues to be responded to by ministers. We have a crisis in our country and cannot continue as if nothing happened. Uh, the, the convenience of clusters and ministers come second to the issues of the people in our country. And currently, the issue is this pandemic. And that is the reason why we said that we need to ask questions, hold them accountable, not just for the sake of holding ministers and the executive accountable, but also resolving issues of people in our country. And I think the urgency of the matter necessitates that we look at these portfolios first, uh, these departments and ministers first, before we go to other ministries. And I think that was the reason why it was placed on the agenda in the first place. So I would agree that we go with the, 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 the proposed new clusters for, for COVID-19 responses. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is there any other member on the matter? Yes, Madam Speaker, it's Dr. Mulder speaking. No, I, I'm trying Dr. to understand. Mulder. Thank you, ma'am. I'm trying to understand is that the position of the ANC that we do not make any change to the clusters and to, that we stay the way we were before anything was proposed. I understand that's the, that, that's the position of the ruling party. My problem with that is the following. Why do we have this memo on the, on the agenda today? We've got this memo on the agenda because this was discussed in the Chief Whips Forum. And there was a feeling that we should give prominence to the portfolios affected by the pandemic. What is the purpose of the clusters? The clusters are there so that the executive are being kept to account by the legislative branch. And the need was expressed that we need to prioritize those specific portfolios. So I, I hear what is being said about the budget. That is something else. We've, be, we've said we need some transparency and some accountability with regard to the portfolios and those that specifically deal with that at this moment in time. So that's why we've got this memorandum and I think that the proposal by the ruling party is not acceptable to me. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ntachem. Are you... Who, who is that, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. What, 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 what we are saying here is that the COVID-related methods are as important as other methods. But as we agreed on previous problems, that we must prioritize them. To us, even if we want to prioritize them, it does not necessitate us to change the clusters. What we may do is to lift those uh, departments or those portfolios that are COVID-related without having, re having to recluster the committees. Keep the committees as they are, uh, clusters as they are, five clusters. Then if you need, uh, uh, as a matter of agency, uh, uh, information from police, from defense, as well as from education, take from each cluster that is, that it, from each cluster combine rather than restructuring the, the, the entire uh, um, uh, uh, five clusters. That is what our submission is all about. We are not undermining oh. the fact that we have to uh, oversight uh, 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 government. That one we agree. That's our responsibility. But what we are saying is that don't, don't this de-established de -establish the clusters that are currently there. Let's rather find a way of combining these because in our, as we said earlier on in the, in the, in the Chief Food Forum that the reason why for the 27 we are taking cluster 3 and cluster 2, we, we came to a, 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 a conclusion that in cluster 3 you only have one critical department at the moment, which is Cocta. Hence, we took Cocta and then we said, let's look for another cluster. So we're saying this arrangement must, must stay up until we do a, a thorough evaluation when time goes. Thank you. 
thank you. Honorable members, I think I hear you saying almost the same thing. One is that the clusters have been set in such a way that um, there needs to be tightening of other departments being put with others. That was the input that came from Memazoni, who were saying, can you look at women, can you look at public service and administration, da, 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 da. Those are monitoring, uh, basically monitoring uh, departments. But can you make sure that they also serve under a unit or in between, because they have all the other functions also. Then we, we get the ANC saying, yes, we agree, but let's keep the clusters as they are originally, but let's have flexibility for as and when a need or agency arises. And that is why um, Mema Ma Jodina said then we are flexible and we can then pull out a cluster or a question from a, a department which is not necessarily in the trainer because there is agency and there is a need to put questions there. So I think to hear members saying, for now, let's look at how, what is the most urgent matter? Can a question come from a cluster outside the, the related cluster which is supposed to be appearing, but because it is urgent, can we be flexible enough to accommodate that? But let us also look at a situation beyond COVID-19 and retain the clusters as they are. I'm not sure whether I, I'm, I'm summarizing you well, but that is what I heard. So that there is flexibility into the institution, but we are also alive for for maintaining what worked in the past. Did I summarize you well, or did I leave anything out? Speaker to Natasha. Member Zoni, yes. Speaker, I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I appreciate very much your, your willingness to look at things like urgency. But I do want to to warn that I do think it places a very uh, unnecessary burden on your shoulder because when and if such such an occasion arises where, for example, I, I decide that uh, or the DA decides that um, uh, the Department of Health is, is uh, must urgently ask to answer, answer questions, but it doesn't fall within their cluster, I would then have to write to you as, as the Speaker of the House and ask you to uh, adjust the rules and use your um, ability as speaker to make a decision as to whether or not there could be a, an allowance made. And I don't think, and I mean, I would have to be guided here by Mr. Tyso and, and the, the legal services. I don't think that anyone in parliament currently has the authority to bypass the rules of parliament to allow for a, an urgent addition to, to one of the specific clusters. So unless I'm incorrect there, I think that that, although I believe that your intentions are, are very, are very uh, bold and I think that they are, are, are very good in their nature, I, I don't think that that would be a, a possibility given the, the current rules that we have. But I, I, I'm open to, to hearing if I've misinterpreted the rules in any way. Vema Mazoni, let's take a very practical example. The court ruled um, on the death of a citizen at the hands of the police and the South African National Defense Force. Should Parliament not be interested in the ruling? Should Parliament not say, now we want to hear from you, the two ministers, what happened here, what actions you are taking? That is the kind of flexibility that I think we must always have. We cannot now wait if defense is only going to come uh, later on to say, look, um, now we want to hear about that murder, that killing. No. So I'm saying, let's hear what the Bukaso are saying. But for me, the flexibility, the agency was more talking about it is an urgent matter in front of the South African community. How do we respond to this ministers? Please account what happened here. Uh, Ma Ma Pato, do you want to get into Madam it? Speaker, can I have yes. a two finger on that very quickly? Yep. M Madam Speaker, you see, you and I are in complete agreement. I agree with you that that is what needs to happen. 
my my concern is that I don't think that Parliament allows you to have that discretion. And while I do think that you should have that discretion to say in in this example for that that, that you use with the with the security services having to account to Parliament, I agree with you one hundred percent. But my concern is that our rules don't allow you to have that kind of discretion. Uh, just as a real honourable members of a of an interaction between myself. In fact, members have that instrument already. Um, matter of national interest and whatever and whatever and matters of, and, 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 and members have used that opportunity to bring matters to the fore, to deal with this matter because it is. But that is separate from having the formal question and answer session that I acknowledge. Dr. Kaso, do you want to come in and help out here? Yes, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, there are basically two rules that would uh, arise uh, in the context of this discussion. It's Rule 138, which says questions for oral reply by ministers must be dealt with in accordance with a clustered system of government as determined by the Rules Committee. That's first. So the starting point is that cluster questions must be within the specific cluster. Yeah, according specific to cluster, cluster 1 or cluster 2. The second uh, rule is Rule 141, which deals with questions, urgent questions. This rule reads as follows. A member may request the speaker in writing to allow an urgent question for oral reply to be put to the relevant member, to the relevant minister at the next question session for ministers in the House, regardless of whether that minister falls within the ministerial cluster for that day. So that is the, that is the exception, of course, there would be conditions. It must be a matter that is urgent, that cannot wait for its cluster. And so the, rule, the, the conditions that you apply for matters of public importance would be, is applicable here. That is the, the, the guideline that speaker would use to determine whether a question is urgent or not. So, ma'am, I'm basically saying where a question is not urgent, it would not be allowed as an urgent question. To, it, to must be asked within, it must be asked within the cluster. But if it is an urgent question, then it can be asked outside of the cluster. And the rule would say that for that question, it, it, it receives priority, uh, prominence, basically, in the next question session, even if, if it's outside of the cluster. Uh, yeah. Speaker. Speaker. Okay. Yes, yes, and that is six, Yeah, yeah. Speaker, I think what Mr. Kasso said is what I had been thinking about. That is the sunset clause. So I think no member of the House is denied from uh, writing to you and saying that we have an urgent question. But I think for the sake of progress, maybe we should just say we've combined clusters two and three for the 27th of May. Let's take one and five, uh, for example for the following question and then take four and then, you know, keep working it like that. Let's take two clusters together as we've done now and see how it works with the proviso that the rules provide for these urgent questions uh, that members may have. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Klaso? Um, combine Madam. one and five? Yes. Yeah, members will obviously will be guided by uh, by yourselves. For instance, it, 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 it has been done for next week. Two and three have been yeah. combined. So where there is political yeah. agreement on the combination of clusters is doable. And, uh, and member would, I would have advised also that given that there is no consensus of, on the matter, it may it's a matter that may need to be referred back to the parties to consult further. Uh, but at this point in time, as speaker has given, the, the guidance. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, Madam Speaker, I think I think for urgent matters there is a rule that we can rely on. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the, the 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 reason I want I brought you back in was to look at the suggestion from the honourable thing whether for the next question session session we can combine one and five specifically. What does the meeting say? Chairperson, 
May I yes, yes, react to yes. this? Yes. 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 No, I understand that the proposal by Mr. Singh is a compromise. And that could be practical. Yes. It could assist in terms of that we have a quicker flow through the different uh, clusters. I just want to have yeah. clarity in my, in my mind. Which uh, body of parliament will take that actual decision every for every week or whatever? Will that still be the program committee after the WIPs consulted in the chief WIPs? Says the speaker. Um, please come in. Who? Can I come in? Yes, please. Can I come in? Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Can I, be ready I want to. Speaker? Please proceed. Mr. Julius. Okay. Thank you very much, Speaker. Let me uh, support uh, what uh, Honorable Singh have said and to respond to Honorable uh, Mulder. Um, uh, uh, Honorable Mulder, you, 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 you're raising it very correct that um, uh, when after the, the consensus at the Chief Whips Forum, let the NAPC agree in terms of which which clusters, which two clusters are, are, are being agreed upon for, for, for questions. In the meantime, let's agree on this uh, arrangement. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Speaker. Yes, sir. Please, yes. Mr. Julius, go ahead. Go Thank ahead. you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, just, I think we just need to put our arguments in context also. Uh, I still maintain that the, the, the clusters as proposed uh, priority clusters for, for COVID-19 needs to go ahead. Um, but I just need to understand I, I can't understand the reasoning from the ANC why the cluster should remain. Besides the fact that um, these ministers in the priority clusters will not be held accountable. And I think that's the point of the ANC. It's to prevent these ministers from being held accountable. We already don't have our oversight role on the command council as parliament that I think is unconstitutional. And on top of that, we cannot ask urgent questions on this. Because if you ask an urgent question as a rule stands, it will be one or two questions in that same class. And I don't think it will do justice to the pandemic and the crisis that we are in now. Thank you, Chair. That's a political point. I hear you, Honorable, Honorable Julia. But I do not understand how we are Sorry. unconstitutional and all the other arguments. I think what we need to do no, is say to back. ourselves, we are in this situation, and this situation says that we are doing business unusual. There is a compromise being suggested that says, let's agree for the next cluster. There is also an... an, an, an an input made that says keep the clusters but be flexible, move matters as they appear uh, um, agent. So what we do need is, can we agree on the compromise, as, as Mr. Mulder puts it, of the suggestion by or the Honorable Singh? Can we then move on to say that, but we need to come back and having digested properly whether we are saying the original clusters stay, stay as they are or the COVID-19 clusters stay as they are so, so that we, we, we don't get stuck and, and, and can't finish this meeting because we are stuck on whether or not we are holding the members to account, the members of the executive. Members of the executive can be held accountable collectively and individually as ministers. That is open for the, minister, for, for, for the members of parliament to exercise. So can we move on this, please? Yes, please. We Speaker, move. We agree. Speaker, Speaker, can I please? Ma'am Jodina. Yes, please. Yes, it will be it will be incorrect for me to leave Mr. Julius 
with with the accusation, strong accusation that we we want to defend ministers. We're not here to defend ministers. And when we speak our opinion, we're speaking our opinion as members of this rules committee. We're not uh, 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 representing any minister here. And no one is saying they must not be called accountable. We are saying in the meantime, let's let's combine clusters, but also the, the uh, rule one for one, which which allows members to ask a, a, a special or urgent question, is also going to be applied. So I don't agree and uh, and I want to reject that we are here to defend ministers. That is not true. And he must not accuse us here. And he must just come up uh, uh, in, in debating the matter that is on the table and start, uh, st stop bringing matters that are not relevant by accusing uh, the ANC here. Thank you, Member Jordina. That is precisely why earlier on I made an example about the recent court ruling on the killing of a citizen. And so for me, it is important that um, we finalize this issue amicably as members, that we, our job is not to cover anybody. Our job is to cover the citizen and the country. And that is what oversight is all about. And it doesn't matter whether it is in a debate, whether it is in a written question or an oral question. We must use all opportunities to unite as a country on behalf of the citizens. So, honorable members, I would not want to have a meeting that degenerates because we are accusing one another of being derelictious. I hope not. I hope that we will all really prioritize South Africans. So, my conclusion on this particular matter is that we are agreeing with the suggestion put by the Honorable Singh combining uh, cluster one and five to ensure that the question session that we will have after next week is, is productive. Two, we are agreeing that we've got two rules that we can use in the meantime um, f to deal with matters of agency as long as they reach us in such a way that we can really put pressure to have those agent matters debated and, and, and be dealt with. We also agree that um, in the meantime, we are agreeing that we will keep the clusters as they are. You will come back to us as um, the rules committee, um, whether it has uh, been a discussion again at the Chief Whips Forum, uh, filtered through the programming committee, but rules will again be seized with finalizing the issue of whether or not we want to maintain the clusters as they are, or whether we want to look at amendments in the future of how we cluster the departments. And I want to leave this matter there, that we have a compromise for now for the, for the other session of questions, that in the meantime, we are applying ourselves. Thank you very much, honorable member. Um, the other thing. Yes, ma'am. The other thing. We had agreed that we would give you an opportunity to deal with an item you were considering. Uh, on the unanswered questions. And I think I want to give you that opportunity now. Thank you, Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I think it fits in very neatly with what we've been talking about uh, in the last few minutes or so. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I think uh, we are all aware that the issue of unanswered question is a perennial problem. And uh, I am also aware, uh, Madam Speaker, that you hold very dear to your heart the principle that Parliament must hold the executive to account both in theory and in practice. However, in practice, that is not happening because when we look at the list of unanswered written questions, which was made available to us last week, there are almost 300 unanswered written questions. Now, one could say, yes, there's COVID, but what is of great concern, Madam Speaker, is that some of these questions have been unanswered from February the 13th. Now, there was no COVID at that time, and 10 days would have allowed them until the 23rd or 25th of February to respond, but those questions have not been responded to. But having said that, Honorable Speaker, I have in my possession a report of the previous Rules Committee, uh, which was tabled in Parliament on the 25th of October, witness day the 25th of October, where this matter was considered by the Rules Committee, and a report was tabled in the House, but not adopted uh, for consideration by the House. 
and it makes some very uh, good recommendations of the establishment of a subcommittee that would meet uh, on, on, on a regular basis with the speaker, call those ministers into account for why they're not answering questions. And I'm suggesting, Honorable Speaker, that we, 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 we unearth this, uh, this report from the archives, look at it and make sure that the, this report is tabled in this parliament and the recommendations are implemented as soon as is possible. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Ndade Kaso, can you advise us on this one? This report is from this parliament or last parliament, and how do we deal with it? Madam Speaker, the report is from the fifth parliament. The Rules yeah. Committee indeed uh, considered the matter in terms of uh, uh, Rule 136, which says the Speaker must, in consultation with the Rules Committee, establish a system to monitor and report regularly to the House on questions that have been uh, endorsed and unanswered on the question paper. So this subcommittee was then uh, dealt with, and the Rules Committee agreed on it. Uh, the report was tabled, as indicated by Mr. Singh, and there was a a, a request at a subsequent meetings of the Rules Committee that uh, they needed to further consultation on the report before it yeah. went to the House. Um, of course, the Fifth Parliament came to an end, and the report never went to the House. So what we propose, Mr. Speaker, is that this report be circulated to this Rules Committee, the Rules Committee of the Sixth Parliament, um, the Rules Committee to express itself on the matter, because the commission yeah. of the Rules Committee has changed uh, to some degree, um, and express itself on the report. If it is happy with the, with the, with the content of the report, then the Rules Committee can um, put the, the matter back before yeah, the House. the report can go to the House. Then go to the House, and the House will consider it. Uh, that thing is that fair? Uh, yes, uh, Honourable Speaker, that's fair, but I think uh, we must deal with it sooner rather than later. Uh, but in the meantime, bring to the attention... Uh, I, I think it is fair, Honourable Speaker, but I think we must deal with it sooner rather than later. And through your office, bring to the attention of the executive and the leader of government business this unacceptable situation and see how it can be addressed until such time that we can adopt or amend this report when it comes before the House. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Indeed, this uh, serious matter has been brought to the attention of the leader of government business. We are awaiting his response in this regard. But I do agree with you that um, let us have the report, let parties consider, let us come back to, to the House with the report if you so agree. And whatever the recommendation that the Rules Committee might want to bring to us, let us follow through with it. Thank you very um, much. Is there speaker. any other member on this matter? Are we agreed? Not on this matter, Madam Speaker. Um, yes, 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 sir. Yes, just Madam to say, Ma'am, that just to say that the, the decision taken earlier on the combination of the two clusters will have to be ratified by the program committee. But I just want the committee yes. to note whether that falls within the scope yes. of that committee. Thanks. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. That is noted, honorable members. If there is no other input, um, I want to move to the next item. And the next item is closure. Honorable members. I second your motion, right. Madam Speaker. Agreed, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much for having a good meeting with you without seeing you. I <laughs> bet. It's bad, Speaker, to speak to people that you don't see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I hope we'll all see each other soon. Please keep safe. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You too. Goodbye, you colleagues. Speak. Keep safe, Thank everybody. You. Thank you yes, very much. Bye bye. bye. Honorable Julius, all honorables. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. bye.
the next one. A pass of a pass. meeting near people. I told the hey. hey, this line is terrible. Well, how do you leave this? Hello, sir. Hello, uh, house chair. Are you still there, house chair? Thank you. 